Hello and welcome to DeFi Chain Demystified, where we dive deeper in special topics around our project. The goal is to bring answers to some tricky questions and maybe even to bust some myths. We are QD and Lord Mark, and today's topic is Is the BBB bad for the DFI price? Exciting question. Kügi, good afternoon. How are you? Or good morning? Uh, good morning. Thanks. You, how is your vacation? Fantastic. Fantastic. Can't be any better, but always time to do a demystified video with you. Thanks for taking the time. I've seen there was a German version of it already. Maybe let's point that out because we have a strong following in the German speaking countries. But we said, of course, the original format is English and we're going to do it in English today and yeah, maybe bust some myths again. Kügi, the BBB, is it good? Is it bad? Does it help? Does it not work? We read a lot of stuff on social media, a lot of opinions, a lot of guesses. How do you feel about the whole situation at the moment? Well, <laughs> there has been some some drama and some 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 yeah a lot of a lot of discussions and topics and talks on on, on social media. Okay. And the the question about the BBB and mm -hmm. is it good for the DFI price? Will it be good? Won't it be good? Whatever has been there for some time, and I think it's uh, we should um, demystify that. Say it this way, and I mean. As we always do, it's it's not about we tell someone if it's good or bad, but let's let's try to give some um, um, yeah knowledge about it and deeper insights so that people can do their own um, decisions and make their own um, decisions and opinions and have educated opinions and not just opinions. I like I like the idea. So we deliver some facts and then everybody out there should make their own judgment if they like it or they don't like it. I think there's no right and wrong but you have fantastic facts like always. So should we jump into your yeah. animations? <laughs> okay, fantastic. For the win. Beautiful, like always. Kugi, let's start. Yes. What are we seeing let's here? Let's start. Exactly. Um, yeah, as always, the, the history of the BBB is a history <laughs> full of misunderstanding. Maybe um, we should explain for the ones who still don't know what the BBB is, what is the BBB? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it will, will, will be part of that. I mean, we, we had a video about the B of the BBB and how B the B is. Um, <laughs> right, but, yeah. um, um, in general, when I, when I talk about the question, is the BBB bad for the D5 price or is anything bad for the D5 price mm -hmm. or whatever, um, I think it's important to understand the, what is the DFI price, say it this way, or what's influencing the DFI price, also mm -hmm. what's influencing the DUSD price, because that's one of the effects of the BBB. Um, so I want to um, split that into basically three or four topics. We'll first go into the DFI price and what, um, what affects the DFI price and how the DFI price is affected, how that all works together. The DUSD price, what DUSD price we have, and how it's what is affecting the DUSD price, and then um, we talk about uh, what the BBB is, what it does, and how it affects the whole system, and then maybe go a bit into um, what is currently, what are the drivers, how DUSD and DFI price work together, and how they affect each other. So, for all who don't know this this nice graphic here. Then they've um, been sleeping for the last for the last four <laughs> months, most likely. And not, uh, 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 for everyone who doesn't know that, welcome to the channel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks for joining in. Um, so maybe just just a really quick quick uh, recap. Um, on DeFi chain, we have a DEX and where we can swap tokens. And on the this decentralized exchange, we have multiple tokens. And I like to split our DEX into two parts. The crypto part, where we have the, our web crypto tokens, Bitcoin, Ethereum, the USDD, USDC, USDC, and DFI. And we have the D token system, our own with the vault systems and the D tokens and the DUSD, where you can um, swap stuff. And basically, I have here all the, the tokens and the, um, the errors are the pools. So because on the DEX, you always have a pool with two assets and you can swap from one asset to the other. The liquidity providers provide liquidity in the pool and then you can swap. And so each arrow is one pool on the DEX. And if you want to swap 
from one asset to another, you need to go along, you need to find a path basically in this graph how to move from one asset to the other. Um, so even though you can type in the light wallet that you, can, that you want to swap from USDD to uh, Bitcoin, for example, you cannot do a direct swap because there is no direct pool for that. It, behind the scenes, it's always a composite swap. So the light wallet will find a path how to move from USDD to BTC in that graph and then swap along that route. So you will always, if you do a USDD BTC uh, swap, you will always first buy DFI and then sell those DFI to BTC. It's done in one transactions, it's atomic, but it moves both pools. So that's why a buying of BTC on DeFi chain, on the DEX, will always move the DFI price a bit up and the DFI BTC price a bit down. So that's, that's just something that's important to know. Um, also, if you go from crypto to the D-tokens, for example, you will swap from BTC to DFI to DUSD to Tesla, for example. So this also always moves this pool. Also explains why you have to pay the fee. If you go, for example, from DSPY directly to BTC, you have to pay the fee that we have right now in this gateway pools. And that's why I call them gateway pools because they are the gateway between the two worlds. Mm -hmm. And because you always will move through that, even though you don't have DUSD in your swap when you say I want to go from SPY to BTC, but you will use the path going through that. that okay. And that's so why step, it's liquidity step here. Step so by step, you cannot jump over certain steps. Okay. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that's how the, the, the decks work. Mm -hmm. And um, what's here. it's important to know that. Um, if you want to know more about how a DEX works and um, how the liquidity moves and everything, we have a video uh, about <laughs> the impermanent loss. What a surprise, <laughs> what a surprise, yeah. <laughs> about the impermanent loss where we explain a bit more about this, um, how to move a pool, because that's mm. another important thing to understand on a DEX. If you're used to limit orders and trading on a central exchange, there, if people stop selling, if people say, I don't sell at that price because price moved up and everyone is bullish, then the next buy order will jump the price up. You have spikes, you have um, gaps in the price and everything. You don't have that on the DEX. On the DEX, you always have the full liquidity. Every step, the liquidity providers are basically always providing you with the liquidity on every price step. So you need to trade the volume. You need to, every move in the price, to, independent of the rest of the market, where the real price or the, the, the price on the, the rest of the market is, on the DEX, you need to to trade that. That's why we have a lot of volume and we have a lot of uh, um, volatility in the market because then people buy a lot to get the price up because it's cheap on the decks or expensive on the decks. So um, that's important to understand because that also explains this um, thing that we always say that a big pool is basically acting as, an, as a magnet for the, for the price to, because the pool with the high liquidity is basically um, holding the price at that ratio. Um, that's why um, we, or DFI, is tracking the BTC price pretty closely. I mean, in the last weeks we lost a bit against BTC, but it's in general trading with the BTC because we have a big, pretty big BTC DFI pool, so it needs a lot of volume to change that price ratio there. And that's mm -hmm. why we also say that we want to have over a long time high liquidity in the stablecoin pools because a lot of liquidity in there means the price, the stable price there will be pretty solid and needs a lot of volume to change. Um, so it's not, not jumping up and down, and, uh, jumping around. So that's also explained there and important to understand for the, how the price is affected. So um, with this out of, out of the, out of the way, um, let's talk a bit about the, what is the DFI price um, or what is a price basically? Um, because we have this well, when we talk about the DFI price, we usually mean DFI price in dollar. How much dollars do I have to pay or get for one DFI? And on the exchanges, um, you have multiple ways of trade DFI. You have um, the central exchange um, somewhere where you have a DFI USDT pair, for uh, example. Um, you have other central exchanges and you have the DEX. And you also have the DFI BTC price index. And now the thing is, in COE, those exchanges are completely independent. Um, if you trade, if someone buys 1 million DFI on KuCoin, the DFI price there would jump up and suddenly you have a high price there, but the DEX price is not affected or the, bet, the, the price on Bitrex is not affected directly from that because someone there bought it. Um, but 
and we also have another video for that, but <laughs> um, there is this arbitrage between the exchanges. As long as you have two exchanges with the same assets, so really the same assets, you have DFI on the one exchange, for example, the DEX, and you have DFI on the central exchange, and you have USDD here and USDD here, and you can swap them, um, and you can transfer those, um, those assets between the exchange, you can do the arbitrage. So if someone on KuCoin buys a lot of DFI, DFI price moves up here, you can say, I buy with USDD on the DFI, uh, on the DEX, I buy DFI, take this DF cheap bought DFI, move it to KuCoin, sell it at KuCoin, get more USDD, move them back to the DEX, and now I'm in the same state as I was before, just with more USDD. And that's what arbitrage is about, and that will move the DFI price on the DEX up, move the DFI price on the central exchange down, because it's going uh, sell, sold there, bought here. And that's done as long as the difference, that you, the, the money that you make when you do the loop, so um, the difference in the price minus the fees is bigger than zero. So if the difference is bigger than the fees, this is done. So this will adjust the prices that they are basically the same um, with the difference of the fees, because if you pay more fees, then you make with the difference, then that's it. And that's also something important to to keep in mind, arbitrage keeps the price in a range of the fees that you have on both sides, because you always pay a fee. You pay a fee here, you pay a fee here, just for trading the commission. So that's why those pools and those prices track the central exchange prices pretty, pretty closely. And that's why the central exchanges are usually pretty close together, because it's, you don't have mm, a lot of different prices between different central exchanges, unless they are closed. If, if they close with drawers and deposits for maintenance, then you see the prices diverge, but if everything is open, um, you have that track pretty closely. That's why we see here the same prices. Even for the DeFi BTC pool, you have the, um, the arbitrage and everything. So those prices are arbitraged, and that's why you have similar prices here and here. Another big question is, um, what about this price? Because here we have also a DFI price in the USD, how much DFI you get for a DFI, or how much DUSD you get for a DFI. Um, but here we don't have direct arbitrage with any outside system um, because the DUSD is just on the DEX. You can't do anything about the DUSD except for trading on the on the DeFi chain DEX. And before we had the stablecoin pools, there was no arbitrage at all. There was no possibility to trade that price against this price, for example. That's why we had the premium because everyone was going in and everyone who bought the USD got in and if no one sold DF, uh, DUSD to DFI, the price would just stay and if this price goes up, it's a difference. Um, so now we have the stablecoin pools. Um, so let's look a bit into that. Let's no, keep that. Um, if we look at that now with the stablecoin pools, we, as I said, we don't have arbitrage outside, but we have this, this loop inside. Um, because now, let's say we have a 51 cent real, D real DFI price. I think it changed since I prepared the video, but never mind. <laughs> let's stick with the numbers. Um, this one is arbitrage, so we have the same price here. <laughs> and now we have a 74 DUSD cent per DFI. Um, so the ratio in the pool, not talking about the fees, just the ratio in the pool. Um, this is much higher than this one, but if you look at it, this pool has a 67 cent per DUSD, so the DUSD is in a discount. So mm -hmm. if you go the composite swap via this route, you would have a price of 76 cents, DUSD cents. Um, now in theory, without any fees, this would be arbitrageable because now you could take the DFI, sell it via this route, get 76 DUSD cent, take the DUSD, buy DFI back for 74 cent to get more DFI than you had before. As I said before, arbitrage makes sense as long as it's bigger than the fees. Here we have on this gateway, on all those gateway pools, we have the 30% fee. That's why those two prices are different right now. Otherwise they wouldn't. Um, so, because as long as they have a difference smaller than 30%, what the current fee is, so smaller than the total fee, um, they will just stay as they are because no one is arbitraging. Um, that's why this price, if this price changes, it doesn't really affect this price as long as it's in the 30% range. And the same the other way around, if this price or this price changes, it doesn't affect the other one 
um, as long as it's um, within the 30% range. So there would be arbitrage possible, there would be an impact of this price to this price if it's bigger than the fee. Without the fee, there is no impact of this pool changes. If this pool changes, this price is not directly affected and yeah, it's not changed. So, so much to the DFI price um, and the effects. So far, so much question marks. <laughs> all good, all good so far. All good, perfect. Then let's, let's move on and talk about the DUSD price. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, um, yeah, we have a lot of prices here. And it, when you look at it, the thing is, we have DUSD and we always talk about, is the DUSD in discount, is it in premium? What yeah. do we have there? Um, now the question is, how do you calculate a price for the DUSD? Because you can't directly swap a DUSD to dollar. Um, so we need some reference prices. And mm -hmm. we see here, we have basically three or four errors out of the um, system, out of the DUSD system. So if you want to sell your DUSD or buy DUSD with an outside reference, say it this way, you need to go through one of those pools. Those pools might have different um, um, ratios, and that's where, where the DOSD price comes in. So let's okay. let's look at that in a bit more detail. If you focus on the important stuff, <laughs> um, I, I removed the USC price here because it's it works the same way with the USC price okay. now, but USC is a bit more complicated. And yeah, let's yeah, let's look so at the far price. Easier. Dollar yeah, dollar. so far it's easier to, to, to just track the dollars, but keep mm -hmm. in mind we also have the UC price now, so it's, it's even more possibilities to say it this way. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at the dollar prices, basically what affects the USD price is on the one hand we have the stable coin pool, or the, uh, the stable, uh, so the, the direct pools, where we have right now 67.3 cents, 67.4, so it's if you swap directly from the USD to USDC, you get that price. Um, this gives you the price because Let's assume that USDC and USDD is directly $1. Um, in, in the real world, you uh, really have to also keep in mind or um, take the, the USDD or USDC value. We saw that when USDC debacked a bit um, during the um, drama, uh, but because then this price also changed. Um, but let's, let's say it's, it's, it's $1. Then you have this price via this pool but we also have the DFI route. So you can also <coughs> take the DUSD, move it mm -hmm. to DFI, and then swap it to USDD. And then you get a different price. Right now, this composite swap would give you 68 .8 cent, uh, cent per uh, DUSD. So it's a higher price than this. And again, this is bigger difference than the normal arbitrage difference. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because we have the 30% fee. Because again, if you want to, to arbitrage, to close the loop, you could theoretically say, I buy the USD for 67 cents and then sell it for 68 cents again. But because of the fee, it's 30% um, stop that. That's why we can have different goods or different prices right now, up to 30% range. And also um, important to note here is these pools, as I said before, these pools only change if they are traded. So the DUSD price directly with USDC only changes if someone takes USDC, directly swaps in that pool, buys the USD or the other way around. Mm -hmm. This route changes either when the DFI, the USD price changes, if this pool is traded, or if the real DFI price changes, because that's basically the DFI reference. And because this is arbitrage, this changes as soon as something outside happens. As something, if the overall crypto market goes up, DFI price um, moves with the market up, for example, then this price changes. It has nothing to do with the DUSD in direct, directly if just the market goes up, but the price via this route or this path will go up. And that's why we always say we have a connection between the DFI price and the DUSD price and why a rising DFI price would or help solve the DUSD problem. Um, because if this now goes up dramatically, this goes up dramatically too. As soon as we have here 74 cents right now, if nothing else changes and we have the 74 cents here too, DSI would, the USD would be at $1. Without anyone buying the USD or selling the USD, just because the reference here goes up and therefore this path goes up. And that's why previously, before we had the stablecoin pools, we had the complete dependence on the DFI price because it was only this path for the DSD pool, or for the DSD price. Now we have more paths 
and more stable paths here that are not that dependent on the DFI price, while we are now more, more stable and in the future more stable, but it's still you have the effect right now, also because we have such a high um, oversupply right now in DUSD. We have too many DUSD in the system compared to the DFI values, um, so it's this dem uh, demand and supply um, ratio here is not affecting the DUSD price right now. In the future it will be. We have the mechanisms already defined once we are in a good algo ratio, but until then we are still strongly affected by the DFI price because okay. of this route. And only this route. So basically these prices will be stable or will, will do what the DUSD price does as long as this route is not more than 30% off. If this DFI now dumps 50%, if the whole market dumps 50%, it will drag the DUSD price also down because then we have the 30%. As long as it doesn't do that, this price will go up and down volatile. You can take the better price for, for selling or buying, whatever you have, um, but it won't affect that price too much um, okay. unless it's... Kugi, question. Now that we've got so many different routes here, imagine I want to sell DUSD. How do I make sure that my light wallet that I normally use really takes the route that I want to take? So I think if I want to go from DUSD to DUSD, I would assume it goes the direct route. Is there a possibility that the light wallet decides mm, there's a better option or something like this and does something what I don't know and uh, more fees incur? Or, or how does that work in the background? Um, in general, the, it's... It, it's not that easy to answer um, because okay. it's changing a bit because the, the team is um, working on improving the algo there. Um, generally, uh, what the behavior was in the beginning is that if there is a direct pool for a swap, um, you take the direct pool. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a direct pool, it uh, searches for the path that is the best for you. Um, that, that was the behavior. Um, the team is working on um, also um, uh, looking for paths, even if you have a direct pool, because mm -hmm. without the thirty percent fee or without high fees, um, it it's usually that the direct path is the best. Because if you ha had an arbitrage, it's arbitraged out, and longer paths take more fees. Um, mm -hmm. But because of the fee, it could be that the different path is better. So if you have a direct path, it likely takes the direct path. If you want to make sure that you take a different path, for example, from DUSD to USDD, um, you want to go over DFI, um, then do it manually. So do the hops manually, take the DUSD, swap it to DFI, take the DFI, swap it to DUSD. Because okay. in the end, it's doing the same thing, just not in one transaction, but it do in two transactions. Um, as you would, if you do the composite swap, you don't pay less fees or anything. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same thing. It's just that you do two transactions instead of one but you ensure that you take this route and uh, um, yeah, take directly that path. Okay, so in general that means the light wall is doing the right thing. Uh, if I want to defer from the direct route, then I really have to step in and do two swaps manually to force more or less the coins, yeah. let's say from DUSD to DFI, from DFI to Tether. Okay. To USD, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, got it. Exactly. So um, I think that's that's everything um, to know about the DUSD price. So we now have the what is the DFI price, how mm -hmm. it's affecting mm -hmm. the central exchange DFI price, the real DFI price, um, how it's affected with the DUSD price and the DFI DUSD price and everything. Um, now look at the uh, let's look at the what is what is this BBB that we're talking about? BBB basically stands for buy and burn bot, <laughs> um, just a lot of Bs. And that's currently um, a mechanism that we um, defined as a community to say, okay, the DUSD price is in discount. We want to um, support the DUSD price as a community. Um, the only way to support the DUSD price is by buying DUSD. Um, so you need to get that up. We could either get the DFI price up um, or the DUSD price. And as a community, um, we have the DFI rewards. And now, um, a lot of the DFI rewards that are usually paid to liquidity providers, a big part of that is now moved to the this bot. That is a bot, if you, you always think it's a car, but it's a bot, <laughs> a, a small robot. So it's um, the head is the head of the robot. Yeah, it's the okay. head of a robot. <laughs> um, so they, this, this 
bot gets a 122,500 DFI per day. Right mm -hmm. now, it's a defined number per block, but um, per day it's easier to, to calculate. Um, so around that number of DFI per day, takes those DFI and swaps it around every hour, um, depending on how it runs, um, swaps those DFI to DUSD and burns the DUSD. Um, this burned DUSD, 50%, um, not, not exactly a bit less than 50% of these burned DUSD are then also um, reintroduced as a negative interest as we have it with the fee. But so the, the direct effect of the by burn board, what it does is it swaps DFI to DUSD. So buys mm -hmm. DUSD and therefore affects this pool. And that's all it does. I mean, that's enough, um, but <laughs> yes. there is no, it doesn't do anything else. It's just taking DFI and buys DUSD with the DFI. Um, so you don't have a direct connection here, a direct effect anything here. Um, only this pool is affected. And yes, this would affect, as we, when we look at the DFI price, this would affect this pool if we had the arbitrage possible. But because of the fee, as we said before, because of the 30% fee, a change here doesn't directly affect this route or this price as long as we are in the 30% range. As, as soon as we go above the 30% range, then it would affect it. But until then, and 30% is, is a lot, say it this way. We have mm -hmm. some way here. And so it's not affecting directly the DFI price. The question is, what does it affect? And that's the thing, it affects directly the DUSD price because here we have the direct impact of this pool change to this price. Because as we said, the, the price of DUSD via the DFI path is direct, is the combination of those two pools. And if this price changes, this price changes. So basically the bot reduces this 74 cents constantly every hour. It takes um, roughly 1.6% per day is the potential that it can move if nothing is sold. So if someone sells DUSD via this route, um, they move this price up. Um, we, by burn board, move this price down again. So um, it affects directly this price um, of the DUSD. So the DUSD price goes up. That's why this difference is here, because this price is moved up by the buy and burn board. So that's the effect of the buy and burn board, directly on the DUSD price and not on the DFI price, unless it moves it more than 30% of the other part. But that's also something that's important to understand. It only moves it if those two prices basically um, diverge more than 30%. Mm -hmm. But um, what's also important to understand is um, if people now sell DUSD, they usually take the better path. So because here we have the higher price, selling of DUSD moves through that path and therefore moves that back down. So even if the buy burn board is moving the price up, selling will hold that price a bit down depending on how, how much selling we have compared to the, um, to the DUSD buying, it moves that down. If someone beside the bot buys DUSD, someone from the community, someone else buys DUSD, they won't buy through that pool, but they will buy through that pool because they get a far better price here. Mm -hmm. So they will move that price up. So the bot basically tries to stink those two prices, the real, DUSD pri uh, the real DFI price and the DUSD DFI price. And if it moves that up, DUSD buys will move that up and then there is no arbitrage and therefore we don't have an impact on that price as long as that's just bought up from the community, from normal DUSD buys. So that's the, the effects that we have from the buy and burn board. Now, um, any questions to the buy and burn board? I Maybe there's a question that you want to tackle anyway. I want to understand why are people selling DUSD even if there's a 30% uh, tax stabilization <laughs> fee? You Is this something... <laughs> <laughs> but maybe maybe we can brainstorm on that. I, I don't know if, if you wanted to talk about this anyway or if this is like interrupting your flow. Just let me know. But that's a question what I would like to go into a little bit and s understand. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can definitely address that. Um, I think there are multiple reasons why DUSD could be sold. So in the end, you have to ask the people, but um, right, in absolutely. my opinion, there, there, there are a lot of different things because people always see this 30% fee and they're like, I'm not going to buy DFI or sell DUSD for a 30% fee. I'm not paying 30% mm -hmm. fee because they only see the fee. Um, 
in reality, it's like you have a different DUSD, uh, DFI price in the USD than in USDT. That's, that's, that's the reality. And the question is, is this price good for you? Right now, you pay, I, I think it's already 1.10 DUSD per DFI. That's your current price of um, DFI in DUSD. Mm -hmm. um, do you accept that as a price or not? Um, if you have USDD and you buy DFI for 51 cent, okay, that's far cheaper, no, no question about that. But if you think in DUSD, and for example, um, you sold DFI to DUSD at $3, because you, when DUSD, the price was three, still above $3, when the whole Terra Luna stuff happened and you said, okay, you have a lot of DFI and you want to go into stable coins, you get, take the DUSD stable coin, you go there. Um, and now you could buy it back for $1.10 for one DUSD 10. So you sold it for three, you buy it for 110, still a good price. Um, yes, you have a bit of the fee, it's an impact on the price, but it's the DUSD price. And I think a lot of people are doing that right now um, because they assume, if they're right or not, we'll, we will see, but they assume that they won't get a better price in the USD. So the DUSD DFI price will only move up from here because that's mm -hmm. what we see right now, that the DUSD DFI price is not going down dramatically mm -hmm. because a lot of people buy DFI with DUSD. Crypto is pumping and everything. So mm -hmm. it, it's likely, it's possible that we don't see that and that that's a reason. The other reason is, of course, people um, uh, lose faith in the DUSD, don't like the DUSD system, don't like that it's um, feedback for so long and start moving up. We see a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt in the community, a lot of panic in the community, a lot of drama in the community, people getting really fearful for different reasons and start to sell the USD because they are afraid of stuff and sell the USD just because they want to sell the USD. Um, so that's a lot of reasons to sell the USD right now. Um, it's in a discount, so for me it's also a lot of reasons to buy the USD, but I understand people, some people are afraid and sell it. Um, and the other thing is, um, one important thing to understand regarding the whole situation is, we have too many DUSD in the system compared in the past. So maybe if you um, look just at, at the pools in general, that's because that's also a bit on the, on the next topic. Um, we have too much value or too much price, say it this way, value is always too much price in this side compared to this side. Um, it's, um, the effect with the algo DUSD and everything, but in, it boils down to we have too much price here compared to here. Um, and we need a parity here to get to the $1 of price here and price there. Um, that's why we have a discount right now. And to change that, we either need to get the price here up, and that's one thing that we are trying to work on with the negative um, interest and the incentives to say, okay, we increase the price of DFI, so that we have a parity here again. And the other thing is to remove DUSD from the system um, while burning and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because we have so many DUSD, because many people bought DUSD, we have too many DUSD in the system, it's, it, 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 it's in the nature of the thing that it will be sold. There will be DUSD sold on the way to the bag. Um, because people are just waiting for the bag and then sell it, or because um, they just want to get out after time. But on the way to the bag, it's completely um, expected no, that, mm -hmm. that there will be sales of the USD. Um, the question, so the question is not when they come, but uh, the question is not if they come, but when they it's come. It's when they come. Uh, so it it it, 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 it it actually means it's expected. So it's not it's not unexpected behavior. It's part of the whole system how it how it evolves. Maybe, uh, but also one thing that you that you addressed that there's a lot of fat at the moment like uh, about haircuts and stuff like this that are not that are like uh, just wild ideas out there and maybe that's why people got insecure right and started selling as well but i would that that's not part of the topic so exactly. careful about it's these things and the normal selling is just a normal thing like i mean everybody can buy and sell and and if you are happy to take that 30 percent because you maybe even got a better price before then that's absolutely fine i think that's a very good explanation because sometimes people say oh why would somebody do that what is wrong right no it's nothing wrong it's, it's part of a system right trades are normal people take profits where they can and where they have a an advantage of it yeah. i think that's just absolute normal 
I okay, think cool. in general, it's you have to distinguish between the rational sales, people who mm. are like, okay, I made a profit with that and I sell now, and the irrational sales where people get fearful for no reason because yeah. of fat or if, for whatever reason, yeah. and they just sell it now without a rational uh, decision. Exactly. Um, but both things happen in a market. That's that's what we have in a market. Um, and for me, the important thing is to understand that on the way to the pack, these, mm. these sales are happening and will continue to happen. And the good thing that we have right now with our with the negative interest, with the fee and everything, we the, a sell of DUSD is not good for the DUSD price, but overall also have positive effects on the system because we have the negative interest because sales therefore increase the incentive for DFI and raise the DFI demand. Um, so it's not only a negative part if you have sales, but sales also have a positive impact. We have now 100 million DFI pulled into the vaults because of those positive impacts, because of those sales basically. And also, um, and that's maybe something to look at the, at the price again, if we have a sell of DUSD via the, that pool, it increases that price and therefore makes the buy and burn bot far more effective. If someone sells a big chunk of DUSD via that pool now, it's not good for the DUSD price, um, but that also means that the DFR and the bot is burning far more DF, um, DUSD via that wood, gets far more um, yeah, DUSD for the DFI. So also has a positive impact on that. And maybe because um, we started, is it bad for the DFI price and everything? And this whole discussion started, or uh, usually gets more intense when DFI price is falling, especially against Bitcoin, because the overall market is pumping, we track the market, but we are falling a bit against Bitcoin. And everyone is getting insecure, why is it falling? And we have the buy and burn board, the buy and burn board is selling DFI, so of course it must be the buy and burn board. Um, now I'm saying that basically the buy and burn board has no direct impact on the DFI price. Um, so why is the DFI price falling? Uh, when we have so why is it falling, Kuge? Why is it falling? You know, what is happening? Exactly. <laughs> What's happening? Um, so let's, let's talk about it. As I said, DUSD cells are expected, are normal and um, need to be there. Um, mm -hmm. So let's, let's look at what the DUSD cells actually do. And we have, thanks to the different routes, we have different ways how the DSD cells affect the rest of the system. So if you take the stablecoin route, it's, it doesn't matter which stablecoin pool you use, it's just, I take this as an example so it's easier to understand. So if you sell directly from DUSD to USDD, um, this has an effect on the DUSD price, the DUSD price goes down, but now you can choose with your USDD what you want and might not have any impact on the rest of the system. If you take those USDD and directly go to Cake, unwrap it and move it to some other exchange, the DFI price is not affected at all. Okay. If you mm -hmm. move on to BTC, for example, um, or just to DFI because of the increased demand of DFI in the world and everything, if you want to use it, um, you even have a positive impact on the DFI price. So a DUSD cell can have a positive impact on the DFI price if it's done via stablecoin route. That's why it will be important in the future to have a high um, liquidity there um, so that we have a lot of moving here. If you move further to BTC, it buys DFI, then sells DFI again to BTC again, explains why this ratio is going down a bit because every, this is a big pool and everyone who wants mm -hmm. to go out of DFI right now will likely take this pool because there you have a high liquidity, less slippage and everything. So you take that and go out then. So that's, if you have a lot of that movement, the DFI price in BTC goes down, but the overall DFI price. And BTC is pumping, right? So a lot of people maybe see more uh, growth potential in BTC anyway. So that's why it could be also that people yeah. go into BTC, not even if they want to get out, they just want to participate in the, in, the, in the rally of Bitcoin. Exactly. That, that's also one of the, in mm. my opinion, one of the reasons why people sell the USD um, mm. because they have stable coins. They went to the sidelines um, last year and now they are like, I want to get back in. So they buy BTC because BTC yeah. is pumping. Yeah. So mm. they go the wood and or this wood and all. And then we have the other wood and this is the DUSD, DFI wood where you sell DUSD directly for DFI and then mm -hmm. continue. If you stay in DFI, again, no impact on the DFI price, but if you do anything else with the DFI, if you want to go out directly or via BTC or anything, um, even if you stay in BTC because you want to participate on the pump, um, then you have a negative impact on the DFI price. So those DUSD cells have a negative impact on the DFI price. Um, but as I said, 
they are expected. So it's not that the buy and burn board triggers, or not that the buy and burn board is the reason for that. In my opinion, they would be the anyway on the way to the back because somewhere on the way to the back we see the DUSD cells, but the buy and burn board is now providing them with a better price and therefore triggers them to be there. Um, so it um, speeds up the process of getting to the back. Because um, in my opinion, we reach the back once we have the balance of those sales. So everyone who wants to get out right now or wants to get out below $1 um, needs to get out of the DUSD, needs to sell the DUSD before we can reach the, one, the, the DUSD at $1. And we saw that in the beginning when the burn bot got stronger. In the beginning, it sold, it sold, it sold. The price of DFI DUSD got, got down, got down, got down, got down. The DF, DUSD price um, got up. No impact whatsoever. We didn't see any selling in the DUSD until the DUSD reached nearly one dollar the first time. Um, so it was end of February, no, end of January. Um, and then suddenly we saw the beginning of big DUSD sales. Um, so the, the the reaching of the DUSD price uh, of one, nearly one dollar started to trigger those DUSD sales. And since then we now see constant DUSD selling because people, I think people are now getting into this. Okay, I don't, I won't get a better price for DFI um, in DUSD. And now they start selling constantly. As soon as the buy and burn board move the price a bit down, they, they buy it again. Yeah, um, they are FOMO, so right? They want, they want to get back into the crypto game. Like I said, the sideline position is not a very interesting one when the whole market is pumping. So they want to get back. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that the, the buy and burn mm. board, as we, as we have it here, is basically countering those trades so that the DUSD price is not dumping completely. Because if we wouldn't have the buy and burn board right now, those DUSD cells that just go out or just want to participate mm -hmm. in the pump and everything would dump the DUSD price dramatically. Um, since we have the buy and burn board, that price is pretty stable, so we're countering that um, and therefore also triggering that they get out, that they do that. What we would always happen on the way to the bag, it's just now happening faster. So we speed up the process of getting to the bag, of solving the whole problem. And we have the positive effect of the fee and the negative interest with it to support the DFI price in general. So in my opinion, yes, DFI price went down versus BTC because BTC was bumping a lot um, and we had a lot of these effects. But with all the positive effects of the negative interest and everything, we supported the DFI price with these uh, uh, yeah, um, incentives and everything. So I think the main reason is the USD sales that got out of the system, um, but we're countering that and yeah, it also has positive effects for the whole for the whole system that that this is there. And also, yeah, we have now the hundred million DFI already pulled into the walls. The the free DFI are less and less, and we still increase the the, the negative interest is still increasing. So um, we are pulling more than the emission, more DFI than are added to the system, are added to the walls. So we are actually taking DFI out of the supply, of the free floating supply every day. Um, yeah, and this will, will have an effect over time. Uh, and that's, that's the positive side. side and we've got now 33%, I just checked, 33% negative interest rates for the USD loans. That attracts, yep. of course, a lot of collateral. And that's exactly. the that, that's 100 why million DFI you're talking about. No? That's already 100 million in there. So if mm. the negative interest, if the, for example, if now this pool moves up, so we have a bigger sale or something, and this price goes up, and the buy and burn bot would now sell or get 10% or 20% more for their DFI, the negative interest will rise accordingly. And if you now say, okay, we have 20% more negative interest, for example, means mm. we attract 20% more um, collateral, would be 20 million DFI. Um, so we are in numbers already where we say a few percent change attract a lot of DFI and yeah, we don't have that many DFI in the whole system. <laughs> um, so 20 million DFI is a lot. So that's so 20 million DFI in the vaults or demand for 20 additional millions normally should increase the price for DFI. No? Usually, um, but th that's the thing, you don't know where it's coming How from, I think I had the, <laughs> we had, we had this, exactly. Yeah, uh, exactly, we had this in previous videos. If you, sold, right? mm. 
Yeah, if you told anyone two months ago that we will see 100 million DFI moving into the world, everybody would have expected uh, an in immediate increase in, uh, in the price, uh, immediate pump in the price, because mm -hmm. it's more than 10%, I think 15% of the overall supply of DFI it moved into the world over two months. Um, but it didn't have that positive impact that we expected right now. I don't know if this is, I mean, we, we moved a lot of free DFI, free floating DFI, um, but as I said, they, they are not um, infinite amount of DFI available. So if we continue the tr this trend, we will face a liquidity squeeze basically, which is usually a strong impulse for the price. Okay. But yeah, let's see. No. No, no predictions because so maybe may, may, maybe to wrap it up because we are uh, quite deep into our recording today already. In general, it has a certain impact on the price, right? The BBB has an impact on the DUSD price, but no direct impact on the DFI price. Exactly. But it triggers the DUSD sell. The DUSD sales have an impact on the price, and the they would anyway happen on the way to the back and the BBB is, is speeding up that process. Okay. It's not making things worse or not the main reason for things that we see out there. Price -wise. It's just speeding up the process that would anyway happen and this, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's actually good. So okay. still very, you're still very positive regarding the BBB story and uh, you didn't you don't think we have to rethink the whole thing so it's going according to plan because there were a lot of yeah, comments out there oh Kugi, that's screwed up that's never gonna work it's like all not like planned so no this is wrong it's the, working the thing is all numbers beside the price mm -hmm. are working as expected we see okay. the expected effects and we, the wanted effects and it's all working out behind underneath the hood basically it's just the <laughs> price is not and that's also BTC, uh, such a strong btc pump makes it hard for each altcoin for every altcoin to perform well very BTC. very very important to say i mean guys have a look out there a couple of people also did did some homework and and put it on their tweets uh more or less no coin can keep up with btc at the moment so is dfi i know we wish that DFI always outperforms BTC, we are not, right? I think we are just one not of right now, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully soon. But at the moment, it's just not happening. I wish it would be, but uh, yeah. Let's see. That's I think the overall story. If if Bitcoin is outperforming everything, then it's hard to go against it. Kugi, there was a lot, <laughs> a lot of errors. Probably. I mean, error, not errors, not mistakes, uh, like. <laughs> errors and and paths and numbers thanks for taking the time to explain that um guys if you uh, want to see the german version um that kugi did alone a couple of days ago please check out his channel also subscribe to his channel he promised to do a couple of more videos there so follow him easy to find uh, go on his twitter account his youtube channel i think your youtube channel is linked up there as well right on your Twitter account? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> otherwise Kugi for sure. He's gonna link it up there soon. So otherwise he's easy to find. Just Google him and then you find him on YouTube. Kugi, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for the amazing thanks graphics for like always. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk soon when it's demystifying time again. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.